They want to be able to be the North American team that finally beats the Europeans on the stage. I think we can go to draft now here for game at number five between these two teams, uh, as I'm getting word that it is ready to go here uh, in a moment, I suppose. I mean, when we're talking about Tomb now, once again, we mentioned a few of the priority picks here for sure. We're talking about Genji, of course. We talk about Tassadai again, who has that impact with the double support role. And also pretty high, I would still expect, especially when we're talking about the double support again, Aureal has been rising, especially for the European teams, and North America has started to adjust to that a lot by banning her out early. But I could definitely also see another early pick here Ooh. on their side. And this is exactly what I was mentioning earlier. Get rid of the... Get rid of the Genji early on. Psalm has just shown way too often now in the last two games how impactful he is Deuces. on the hero. Skip River, man. Drop it out of there. Should see response here on the right side. I don't mind your head of the Tassadar yeah, or the Aureo. Oriole, then. Yeah, yeah, I think that's smart from Tempo. They just recognize that Oriole is too hard to deal with. Who is that? Tassadar? Uh, yeah. Tassadar. <laughs> They're just speeding right through <laughs> yeah. the draft, man. They're doing my job for me. I don't mind but it. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a Tastar first pick from GFE. They have another opportunity here in the draft to pick from many options. They could go into the Vala that fans obviously favored pretty heavily. They could go into the Tracer like they did versus Expert. But I'm really curious to see what Tempo Storm responds with if they do prioritize the Uther, whether or not they prioritize Stitches. There's a few power picks that I'm really curious about. Do, do you have to pick Uther here more or less now? Yeah, we yeah. got spanned out already. I mean, if you go into anything else and you don't pick your healer now, Gale Force is going to pick up Uther, is going to go for an easy ban, and then you have a very limited pool here. Yeah. I feel the only hero that we could maybe see at some point, but we haven't really seen Stukov in any of these games yet. Do you think he's going to play a role at all in the series or here in the last map, maybe? Ooh, Greyman Uther. Well, I with Uther being picked, I guess the yeah. answer to that is no. I'd love to see more Stukov, to be completely honest with you. I think he's got one of the highest potential like skill ceilings and objective power caps of uh, any support hero. He feels very reliable on or very reliant on not only the team composition but also the map to an extent and with the lack with the very surprising lack actually of infernal shrines in today's games I think it's one of the reasons why Stukov has not had as much of an impact as we expected. Well he can be solid here I mean we've talked about the strengths of him with the Tassadar and how well he can do Especially here on Team of the Spider Queen, with it being a small battleground, small rotation between the uh, top, middle, and bottom lane. And you have safety right next to you with the forts until they get opened up. So Stukov could totally work out here if Gale Force Esports wanted to go down that route. But do you put it all on the line for game five? Akaface has talked about playing Stukov. He says he likes him, doesn't mind pulling him out. But it's just a case of whether or not this is the time. Yeah, absolutely. So they do end up committing to that early Tassadar Tracer, and I feel like Tempo Storm was actually smart by picking this Greymane early, and not per se like the Stitches, because it allows them to pick a more direct counter to the Tracer, or at least force a ban on one. So I think overall smart drafting coming out from Tempo Storm so far, I'd either anticipate Varian being prioritized by Tempo or being banned by Gale Force here. What about Medivh? When it comes to Medivh, I don't think Tempo's played it in HCC anytime recently. There's a certain trend in North America. It's kind of like a two and two split within the top four. Two teams heavily favor it, and two teams just don't particularly see as much value in it. Mm -hmm. Like Team Freedom, as well as Roll20, both teams, I think, see a lot of value in the hero, but I don't necessarily know if Gale Force and Tempo see eye to eye with us two teams. I, I mean, for a tempo, it would have been one of the tools they could use to negate some of the pressure that Tracer brings in. We've seen it in the previous yeah. series between Europe and North America quite a lot. AD already put on a clinic, too. Like, yeah. It was very, very yeah. hard for a fan to get damage done. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, for now, tempo, first of all, with a ban on Arthur's here. So shutting one of the heroes down that is extremely high prioritized in North America. And now just the question, if Gale Force doesn't ban out Medivh, what's going to be their target here? The Arthur's ban is just a bait, to be completely honest. They want the Varian. It's a bait because they're sort of alluding to GFE that they, like, quote unquote, want the Illidan when they don't necessarily. And the Arthur's has very good matchups into the Illidan. They end up banning the Alarak. I think that's smart. It's something Psalm is very good at. And playing Tracer into an Alarak can be very dangerous, especially in a Game 5 tournament life situation. So Gale Force doesn't end up falling for at least the perceived Tempo Storm trap in this draft. And it's really interesting. I don't know what Tempo Storm will pick here. I mentioned earlier that I, I anticipate a Varian, but at the same time, 
the variant does have a little bit of a weak early game and tempo might not want to opt into the variant just for that reason alone wave clear is definitely an issue with variant you have yeah. gray main that can already provide some wave clear but that can of course not be the only hero that you rely upon on a map like tome of the spider queen so if they go variant they also need i feel to heavily stack into the blow up in the four man they have gray main for that but they would need someone else to deliver a punch I mean, gosh, this might be a little bit crazy, but what about, oh, never mind, it's going to be Stitches and Chen, they just move straight into that. So they're looking for hooks into Uther, locked down for Grey Main Burst, and they have Chen for that bottom lane. So finally, Tempo Storm goes with the ace up their sleeve, Chen. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the thought process behind it. I think it's going to come down heavily to execution, but the Stitches does make a lot of sense. So I, I don't know, who, <clears throat> what's really curious, what makes me really curious about this draft in particular is I don't know how the roles will be set up. Because Cattle has historically been the Chen player for the team, but we have seen in HGC Fury sometimes flex off to that Chen. If they want Cattle on the stitches, then very likely I could see him being there. I mean, can it be any other choice for Gale Force than having Muradin going straight into the mini stun on level 7 so that you have mm. something against Chen, something against stitches? What else would you pick on your phone line right now? They need Johanna. wave clear. And against Expert, they ran the Johanna as well. I don't think Gale Force will deviate from that strategy. I anticipated Johanna just because it has good matchups. In oh, okay, I'm wrong. I mean, do you not think that Tassadar and Dahaka is pretty decent wave clear? Yeah, I would say so it, too. It's, oh, it's decent, hello. but it's not enough to completely dominate the rotation, if that makes sense. Now yeah. with Kael'thas being locked in, the format of Tempo Storm is pretty darn scary. They have quite a bit of wave clear. A lot of this game, to me, is going to come down to the Chen. Yeah, and the Kael'thas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Kael'thas, it, it, it's a pretty stitches. risky matchup into, into Tracer. Tracer. yeah, exactly. Because, like, you can guaranteed get your Living Bomb damage, but then again, there's like the variance of whether or not you can hit your E. If you can hit your E on Tracer and there's no saving grace, <laughs> then you can get a kill. But other, it's, it just seems like it could be a risk here. I mean, honestly, I think the KT can just sit in the back line and not even try to force a scenario and let it all be on the Stitches here. Stitches would be yeah, the right, one that right. I'm keeping my eye on for the hooks. Well, I'm hearing that we're ready to go to game five. It's all down to this, the final game here for tonight to decide which North American team is going to move on to fight against Europe here at the Western Clash. Casters, take it away. Thank you, uh, Kalaris and Analyst. Everything is coming to a head here. Now we're in the deep a in the early AMs of a Sunday here. The final map being played between these guys here. It's going to be amazing. Two of the Spider Queen and two very different teams juxt juxtaposed against each other, Gilly. Once again, Gale Force Esports is making the attempt at a Tomb of the Spider Queen victory with their Tassadar Tracer lineup. But this time, no Johanna. <laughs> I remember King Caffeine disliking playing Johanna heavily Why? way She's back so in the day. She He's does so much damage. Not <laughs> a fan. And then he was playing the uh, Angry Cloud. And so I said, uh, I think that this is his mood. And I asked him later and he was like, no, I am still not a Johanna player. So I knew that that wasn't <laughs> going to be it. But let's introduce them. Gale Force Esports in the blue. K1 Pro playing Tassadar, Michael Udall on Dahaka, Fan playing Tracer, Akaface on Rhaegar, and King Caffeine on a new Barak. Gale Force here on the right side. We have against them a raid. It's Tempo Storm, Cawthon, Som, June, Fury, and Cattle. And let's take a look at that Chen level one talent. It's going to be Grounding Brew. Very helpful. Uh, whenever he drinks, he has 30 spell armor. That means less damage from Lightning Shield, Psy Storm, and most specifically, reactively, to absorb the pulse round damage from Tracer. So happy to see Chen coming out finally from Tempo Storm in this tournament here in Western class. They showed it a lot online. Here we go, four-man impale. King Caffeine starting things off right, following that up with a three-man burrow charge. Hook will pull King Caffeine in, and there is the synergy that is absolutely necessary to the composition of Tempo Storm. After a hook, a gravity lap, a hammer of justice. These things need to be timed well in order to execute, take somebody out. We talked about the grounding brew, and actually, the brew of Chin has been changed slightly with the latest patch. As he drinks, he will get more brew up front, but it's less per second. Exactly, an instant tw tick of 25 brew with a slower generation per second that if you go from a 0 to a 100 brew, it will still be the same rate to get there. So the advantage for Chin is can always use abilities even with a near instant interrupt. 
can see that yellow bar. Now we can't, but trust me, it's still there. Uh, Tracer already has the pulse rounds available in a very short time. Grounding Brew will help with the initial pulse bombs. Oh, hook hits Fan. Fan's got to be careful, but still had recall. Not everything in line quite yet for Tempo Storm to execute. Nice combo there. Stitches hook into Hammer of Justice, into Gravity Lapse equals a dead hero if the support isn't there, if the escape tools aren't there. Kelthas goes for Mana Addict. It's a good battleground to do this on, and it will again help him get some more self-survivability. Yeah, everything is about that Tracer. Once you get 20 Globes, you get a shield equal to your Mana Pool. By that time, you'll have 900 plus Mana, which is more than a third of your health pool at that time. Nice to have a shield that can help you in such a manner. In the meantime, rotations go on. Keep in mind, this is a slow game plan by Gale Force. Except for the Anubarak, which was a Johanna. This is the carbon copy of their draft against Expert earlier on, that where they took Expert to the brink. That it is, and it was a surprising brink that they were able to do that with this composition. Exactly. And one that you would consider unorthodox on Tomb of the Spider Queen, but Gale Force were able to make it work. And it all comes down to the Tassadar and Tracer lineup. This time, not worrying about the armor with Kala's Light. Full-on Kala's Embrace to allow Tracer to continue to heal herself back up. Tracer finds the hook again, but not an unwelcome invitation. <laughs> he uses that immediately to start doing some more damage. Note how Fan is not using his pulse rounds on cooldown for poke damage. He's waiting for some kind of moment. Now, he would have had two more pulse rounds by now, but he wants to make sure that he can capitalize on actually relevant situations. Rather than just damaging, getting it out healed, using it again and damaging, and maybe not having it during a potential blow up period. It's far more important for him at this point to have the patience, and there is our first pulse bomb. Becky on Caterpillar. Not that effective, of course. Uther has the 25 armor, but he's halfway back to having it again. Hook land. This time, Gravity Labs comes out but K1 Pro is able to dimensional shift away. There's a lot of escape for Gale Force Esports. Again, if Tempo Storm wants to be able to kill someone off of these hooks, everything needs to be on point, communicated, especially the follow-up stuns after the hooks, as well as communicating that the hook is going out. Exactly, and so far they've been doing it pretty well. But Gale Force Esports, had a I had a little bit of a chance to talk with them after their first game against Expert, and if it wasn't clear yet, the plan for this comp is to out wave clear, to out rotate, to out pay, and to basically out push the opponent team, in this case Tempest Storm, all the way to a win. And takedowns really don't come into the formula all that much. It's not that important. Well, the setup here is good for Gale Force to start doing that. They have uh, moved into the mid with their Dahaka too trying yeah. to take out some of these towers that have been drained from ammo, but making sure that they are maintaining a consistent soak in all of the lanes while these Webweaver pushes are going on. Tassadar Tracer in the meantime in the bottom lane, applying pressure against the Chen lane. Uh, the Haka has rotated up against Greymane. Nice little damage so far. We've got six towers down, a little bit of four damage, better than they did against Expert. Against Expert, they also got the first turn in, Gale Force, but they only got six towers with zero damage on the four. Nice cleanse. Fan will be fine. Boulder Flavor over Brewmaster's Balance for Fury. This is a common talent that we saw even at the mid-season brawl when paired with the Flying Kick build uh, that I believe it was Reset was running from uh, MVP Black. Getting the initial shielding a bit more and then also the extra persistence for one second after he stops drinking. And that makes sure that he has the shields from Fortifying Brew when he goes in for the Flying Kick to get the extra damage off of Deadly Strike. A nice uh, Chen build here. This time it's Fury that's playing it. Used to be Kato, of course. From working on those heroes, they said in the interview. Yeah. Three gems away for Tempo. That of Barb's slowing things down, as do the Locusts. Gale Force has such a great stall composition. Yeah. They have the vision that Oracle can give from Tassadar and being able to watch over on both of the turn-in points and so many different heroes who can safely delay turn-ins for Tempo Storm. So annoying. The Beatles, the Psystorm Storm at large range, Tracer, there's a lot of things that uh, stop Tempo from paying. All they want to do is just 
Just a Pater Gems, three more. But Gale Force is not allowing it. And they're on the horizon, having level 10. And when that happens, and they get a turn in, that's when you really start to do some serious damage. That's the game plan here for Gale Force. The closer that Gale Force get to 10, the more Tempo Storm step out, hoping to get a pick. One final hook went out, but Caterpillar and the crew were not able to claim a kill on Gale Force Esports, the first blood of the game. And Gale Force reach their heroic abilities and start turning in gems necessary for a second. Fan gets hooked in. Thankfully, the heals are there. Cocoon even being used. Caterpillar gets the pulse bomb and a force wall. Yeah, that's a 10% extra health there. Quantum spike, body blocks are good. Stitches goes down. Tempestorm thought that they smelled blood in the water, but the turnaround and the desolation is complete here. Gale Force Esports get exactly what they want. They keep Fan alive. Tracer flies away like a butterfly, and they get the monsoon swarming down over Tempestorm. Double kill, even as the Red Web Weavers do come out here for Tempo Storm. Yeah, unfortunately for Gale Force, they didn't get a turn in on top of this to Snowball, but Tempo Storm has essentially wasted a lot of power with their Web Weaver phase. Yeah. So it's still a win-win in Gale Force's books because they got heroic abilities first and capitalized and being able to catch Tempo Storm out of position without heroics of their own. Yeah, this reminds me of the curse that Tempo Storm took on Cursed Hollow, that fifth tribute. They get the objective, mm -hmm. but they lose heroes. They bite off a little bit more than they can chew. During the Web Weavers, they lose their own top fort and they're pushing in with a 10% HP Web Weaver. Gems are wasted. The most Tempo Storm we're going to get are some towers now as the final Web Weaver in the mid will fall. Unless they can get some kills, there's a hook. But King Caffeine makes it out A-OK. -okay. Akafe's there making sure that he can help him get out. Cool hook, cool combination and follow up. Anubrak drops the 30%. I don't think he would have died if Dampen Magic wasn't available, but the fact that if you want to take down a Nubrak, you must first take away Dampen Magic. Look at that slam that Stitches just did four seconds ago. That means Dampen isn't available. It's on a 12 second cooldown. It's only active for one and a half second. Anytime you want to burn him, you got to make sure to hit him with some meaningless poke to take it away. Now it's available again. A new rock, basically unkillable for the team of Tempo Storm. False bomb stuns, Divine Shield is used, and that's a long cooldown for Tempo Storm. They would ideally get something done along with it. Putrid Vile even being used and narrowly escaping the force wall to get Cattle back and healthy. Recall force. Every time Tempo Storm uses a hook and can claim some sort of cooldown, be it Ancestral Healing, ideally, even a cleanse. They know that in 16 seconds they can try again. Aka face got isolated a little bit. Damage dealers for Tempo, too far away, specifically Greymane. Nice hook on Anubarak, but the Burrow Charge goes away. These force Walls will continue to be a bane in Tempo Storm's existence in this final game of the Best of Five series. They were even the team experts. <laughs> At level 20, it gets so troll. Oh, 34 gems, Fury! He gets away. Back in the safety, even if he had gone down in a rough situation for Tempo Storm, at the very least, he was in position that hopefully Tempo Storm could have picked up those gems. But you're right, nobody holding Ooh. that many gems wants to be caught. It is such a terrible feeling, especially in this high stakes game. But we've got blue web weavers descending as Gale Force are just about to get level 13 grubby. Perfect for Gale Force Esports. Dangerous moment for Tempo. They need to heal up. Uh, but yeah, at level 20, uh, Tassadar gets so troll, he gets the force barrier, bonus range on force wall, and takes the cooldown from eight and puts it at three seconds. How long does force wall last? Like two, two and a half? It's almost 100% uptime. They gave experts some real trouble. Yeah, and their expert were able to get through it with Medivh portals, with flailing swipes. In this case, Tempo Storm, if they get in danger, especially their Stitches, who already has a lot of problems once he gets engaged on, if he gets too far out of position. And speaking of being out of position, Michael Udall has found a Caterpillar with a Pulse Bomb. It takes him down. Beautiful destruction there on Stitches. The Drag Tongue by Michael Udall finds its mark, and Quantum Spike will finish him off. Level 12 for Tempo, they lose another fort. There's Web Weavers in every lane. And one of the biggest leads we've seen yet in the entire series between these two teams here. Gale Force Esports repeating their very powerful strategy against Tempo and finding an easier prey here. Three level lead, they're making a move on the keep. They are. 
There is no 16, but there's also no 13. But it's still one of the places where Tempo Storm needs to make a stand. They definitely don't want Catapults pushing down that bottom lane, especially because that bottom lane later would be an issue when Galefort starts posturing more and more around the boss. They can do things like make that lane a push and then bring Dahaka up or even keep Dahaka there but force Tempo Storm up to the top. There are a lot of options that open up if Galeforce were able to take down that keep. So with even without 13 into that, Tempo had to posture and not allow Galeforce to get the keep. Unfortunately for Tempo, it gets a whole heck of a lot worse right now. Yeah. Level 13 talent, but without the ability to force, unless they land some kind of miracle hook. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for proving. But yeah, they're they're still talent down. That's the nature of the deficit between uh, you know these two teams here. Temper Storm looking to defend the bottom keep, but that's a full HP web weaver with beetles, with minion waves, all kinds of trouble coming at Temper Storm here. On the opposite side, though, Gale Force Esports has used every last bit of gems, really, to make this Web Weaver push happen. It's now or never if they're going to get a keep. Starting with the Dragon Caterpillar, Divine Shield Force to be used. The Cocoon comes out just after that on oh. June, and this time the hook connects from Caterpillar. Akafis in trouble. Akafis has been taken down. Tempo Storm still miraculously gets a kill. The hook finds its mark, stitches after the Divine Shield with a second life there, finds the mark on the most valuable target, Rhaegar. They delete him. For now, the keep is staying alive. Fan, no quantum spike yet. No empowered pulse rounds of any kind. And Tempo does the near impossible. <gasps> oh, Fan. Fan gets away again. Tempo Storm has a lot of teeth here. That recall location could have gotten scary for yeah. Fan. But thankfully, Tempo Storm uh, were... A surprised, maybe. It was like, oh, Temp or, Tracer's right here again. And in that amount of time, using the blink charges, Fan gets away, but that was fairly disastrous. Not not necessarily a full disaster. Like you see that Guild Force is still in control of this game, but not being able to take out a keep anywhere with that when they had a three level lead and still used all of their gems. Now they are sitting at 30, so they are still maybe in an opportunity to get a fight, but they yeah. wanted a keep there. That was the game plan, and now they must adjust. Yeah, now all they got is 50% on top keep, 20% on bottom, five on the middle. You know, let's call it what it is. That was amazing cornered badger play by Tempo Storm. Oh, yeah. The Divine Shield, very good. Caterpillar turning around, getting the hook when it's needed most in that situation. But and still, the tap is still open. The room is still getting flooded. They've bucketed out a few a few bucketfuls of water, but still they're in a hazardous situation as Gale Force Esports is looking to make things worse for Tempo. They start the boss. Is this genius or is this a risk? Still a little bit away from 16. All they were doing was baiting. They are way more interested in the fight. Again, Caterpillar is the mark. King Caffeine throws out the cocoon and no way to be able to save it. Stitches this time. Pulse Bomb hits Cotham Luck, pushing him away. June grabbed by a miracle drag this time on the side of no, Michael Udall. You do not Divine Shield. Okay, maybe you buy time, but do you really Divine Shield yourself? Still, that was a great bait by Gale Force Esports. Let's not focus on that part. Let's focus on how they did that. They bait the boss, they aggro it. And then, using the bonus movement speed of the Haka, get the Drag Tongue, put the incredible distance between Stitches and Uther. And what the Cocoon this time was on time. Yes, and what I absolutely adore from Gale Force Esports is they didn't just say, well, we don't have gems for a turn in, so what can we do? Let's just get the boss. Instead, they made sure that they had vision of over all of the areas. They knew that Tempo Storm would panic because that keep had yes. already gotten very low, and they played Tempo Storm so beautifully in that situation. Finally, Tempo will start to turn in some gems. They actually don't have enough just yet turned in for Web Weavers, and this is giving time for Gale Force to start escorting this boss toward the top lane, getting closer and closer to the core of Tempo. Yeah, there was some uh, <laughs> interesting maths there as uh, <laughs> Chen was uh, brought in as well to pay. The keep is already down. The boss is high on life. Divine Shield not available. 15 seconds. How can Tempest Storm defend? Can they pull another miracle, Gilly? It needs to happen. It may start with Michael Udall, who has adaptation popped, getting the self heal back up. That's one cooldown this that's been good. forced. This looks they good do. for Tempo. The, the Web Weaver helping to defend here. The boss goes down. No damage on the core. The turnaround. Equal talents. This is the best moment yet for Tempest Storm in ages.
gyms used for Tempo Storm to hold. Hold in a game Ooh. where they have been pressured heavily from Gale Force Esports, but this is a moment, Grubby, and they need to seize it. They are still 16 to 19. They have to use every opportunity they get. It starts with some of the comeback experience they can get. There's experience in the bank inside of these structures if they can just take them down. Web Weaver still around, level 20 away. Tempo needs to get this experience. They need a kill as well. well let's get it both. Let's get a forward and a kill. Tempo with the hook on the five second cooldown. Three, two, available again. Can Kato find his mark? Karen it's the follow up, Bro. good enough. Karen Bro standing ahead of Akaface. He is the dimensional shift. Akaface is the problem if he gets hooked as that Rhaegar. Tahaka's been pushing down in the bottom lane as best he can. Doesn't want to go too far out. Does not want to get caught by Tempo Storm in a rotation. Uh, Gale Force needs four gems. Tempo, they need 30. They also want to fight before level 20, but how do you force without a boss? Rather, like, besides just running at Gale Force, screaming your war cries. Ah, let's go, Tempo. The siege camp is available. You cannot wait. You cannot let this get to level 20. They do exactly that. The what? hook on Tracer. There's a recall too. I thought Michael Udall might be the target there, but Mike's staying around. There's not 20 here yet. This is a fight that Tempo Storm ideally would love to take. And Gale Force is crazy for even risking it. Get behind the safety of your ramparts and wait. Wait patiently and enjoy the benefits. Reap the rewards of your patient play, of your good moves, and of that level 20 and the storm to your talent. Gale Force Esports is so close to victory. They have felt it before, many years ago. Some members on their team, K1 Pro, King Caffeine. There's power here, fan, championship belts. There it is, the force barrier emerges. Get stuffed as well, Storm Shield will help a lot with the area damage of Tempo Storm, <sighs> of which there is a whole lot. Still considering on Dahaka, as this causes a possibility there. How many miracles do you need of us? Asks Tempo Storm. <laughs> we defended three levels down at the keep. We defended the core against the boss. How can you do this to us? Level 18 <laughs> versus 20. Let's see if they have it in them. Ladies and gentlemen, well, the CG winner goes to top four. The loser is in fifth and sixth. Well, Sieging versus Kael'thas is no easy task. And especially versus that stitches. Hooks still have to be respected, even with level 20. Gale Force again using all of their gems. Oh. Here's the hook. There's the first hook attempt. It does a lot. It does a lot. Rewind is available, but no panic button for Nubarak. Arcaface panics with the very out of combat ancestral. Let's not act fancy, he says. I respect. Stitches, Divine Shield. Gale Force made the best of that ancestral healing, and now Stitches has been blown up. King Caffeine finds his mark, taking out the warrior of Tempo Storm. This may be the beginning of the end, Grubby. This could be it. Gale Force Esports with damage on the core. The shields are dissipating. The massive impale, the burrow charge. The warriors are wreaking havoc in the back line of Tempo Storm. That's two takedowns. 60% and going down. A third falls, and this is it. Gale, Gale Force, Force can feel it. Gale Force takes out Tempo Storm and will be in the top four of the Western Clash. Wow. Michael Uda, fan, King Caffeine, Akaface, K1 Pro. They've done it. 3 2 victory. One of the hardest fought victories at the entire tournament. They are now officially here at the Western Clash. Gale Force Esports is the best North American team. They're in the top four. They continue to fight to advance. In